Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 2nd of January. Five, including child killed in firing IED blast to rock India's Jammu and Kashmir. Taliban warns Pakistan of consequences after minister says will target TTP on Afghan soil. And Sri Lankan president says 2023 will be critical year planned to turn around economy. And now for all the details. The Indian territory of Jammu and Kashmir witnessed multiple terror attacks within a span of 24 hours, which killed at least five people. On Sunday, terrorists fired upon three houses in Rajori district, killing four civilians, while an IED blast in the same area killed one child and left several wounded. A cordon and search operation was underway till the last reports came in. The border district of Rajori in the Indian territory of Jammu and Kashmir witnessed two terror attacks within a span of 24 hours, killing at least five people. On Sunday evening, terrorists killed four civilians in Rajori's Dangri area by opening fire on three different houses located next to each other. While within a few hours early on Monday in the same village, an IED explosion took place, in which a child was killed and at least seven others wounded. A cordon and search operation was underway in the area till the last reports came in. जब तलाशी चल रही थी, तब एक और यहाँ पे धमाका हुआ। ऐसा लगता है कि आईडी बहुत तरीके से किसी बोरे के नीचे प्लांट की गई थी, जिसके अंदर धमाका हुआ। उसपे एक बच्चे की डेथ हुई है और सात लोग और इंजर्ड हैं उसमें। मामले की जांच चल रही है। हमने पूरे एरिया को कॉर्ड Army, CRPF, police, Sabine ne area ko cordon kiya hua hai aur talashi abhiyan jari hai. Following the incidents, locals of Dangri held protests against the killings and demanded action from the administration. The protesters also urged to strengthen village defense committees as they raised concern over the attack. Our LG government and the government has said that in this area, the people of VDC will be given to the VDC committee so that these people will be able to do their protection. Socio-political groups also held an anti-Pakistan rally against the killings in Jammu city. India has long accused Pakistan of supporting the militancy in Jammu and Kashmir. Islamabad denies this, saying it only provides diplomatic and moral support to people of Kashmir. Well, people arriving in India from China and five other Asian countries had to show negative COVID-19 test reports upon arrival on Monday as the country has mandated RT-PCR report following a surge in cases in these countries. Passengers arriving in India from China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, Japan and South Korea had to show negative COVID-19 tests upon arrival as the country mandated RT-PCR reports following a surge in infections in these countries. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya tweeted over the past weekend about the requirement for uploading a negative RT-PCR test on a government online portal beginning January 1, 2023 upon arrival from these countries. The government has also asked the state authorities to look out for any new variants in the wake of the global upsurge in cases. The Indian government declared on the 29th, but I know that on the 31st, so in the last moment, I had to go to the RTPC and go to the line. I think everyone knew that on the last moment, because it was a long queue, so I had to go for two hours to test the RTPC. But it's okay, it's done immediately. Six hours में मुझे रिपोर्ट मिल गया है वहाँ पे। With more than 44 million COVID cases to date, infections have fallen sharply in the past few months in India. The active case load stood at 2,670 on Monday. The new guidelines have also come in the wake of at least four cases of the Omicron subvariant VF.7 locked in the country, which is driving the huge COVID surge in China. A catastrophic second wave in 2021, driven largely by Delta variant, had ravaged the country's health system. In news from Pakistan, opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Sunday warned if Pakistan does not join IMF bailout program, the South Asian nation will default over its loans as he asked people to brace themselves for difficult days ahead. The review meeting by Global Lender has been pending since September with no progress since that month. 
Pakistan's former premier and opposition PDI chairman Imran Khan on Sunday lashed out at economic policies of PM Shehbaz Sharif's government and warned if Pakistan fails to enter International Monetary Fund IMF program, the country will default on its loans. Khan, who addressed his supporters on the occasion of New Year, reiterated his accusations against the incumbent government and said thieves can be imposed on the country, but they should fight together to stop them. Talking about bailout program from IMF, Khan added country has only two options, either to join the program or to enter into default over its borrowings. He asked people to prepare for difficult days coming ahead in both these situations. <laughs> तैयारी कर ले मेरी कौम के महंगाई आने वाली है एक अभी जो महंगाई है इससे ज़्यादा महंगाई आने वाली है क्योंकि हम हमारे पास कोई अब दूसरा रास्ता नहीं है आई के प्रोग्राम के बगैर अगर हम आई का प्रोग्राम में नहीं जाते तो हम डिफ़ॉल्ट कर जाएंगे जिससे और ज़्यादा मजीद मुश्किल होंगी जो कि हम इस प्रोग्राम में जब जाएँगे तो हमारे पास आएँगी In December 2022, Global Ratings Agency (S&P Global) cut Pakistan's long-term sovereign credit rating by one notch to reflect a continued weakening of the country's external, fiscal, and economic metrics. Severe floods in early 2022, surging food and energy inflation, as well as rising global interest rates, are also expected to depress Pakistan's economic and fiscal outcomes, with refinancing challenges over the medium term. The report said. Moving on, the Taliban-run administration has warned Pakistan of consequences after Pakistan's interior minister made a statement that they will target the Tehrik-e-Taliban Pakistan on Afghan soil. The remarks came after a series of attacks by the militant group in Pakistan. The Taliban has advised Pakistan to refrain from making provocative statements after Pakistan's interior minister. Rana Sanaullah said Islamabad will target the Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan or TTP on Afghan soil following a series of attacks by the militant group. A statement issued by Taliban-run Defence Ministry in Kabul said that claims by Pakistan's Interior Minister that there are hideouts of TTP inside Afghanistan are false and provocative. We call on Pakistan to resolve the matter through dialogue. We are well prepared to respond to any offensive. The statement added. Sanaula in an interview with the Pakistani news channel had said Islamabad may target the TTP in Afghanistan if Kabul does not take action to dismantle them. Pakistan has witnessed a sharp rise in terrorism incidents especially in border areas during the past two months after the TTP announced to end ceasefire with Pakistan. Pakistan alleges that terror elements operating inside its territory are getting facilitations and support from inside Afghanistan. and using the porous border to carry out attacks and for terrorist infiltration into the country In news from Nepal Nepal's new prime minister Pushp Kamal Dehel is set to seek a vote of confidence in the House of Representatives on 10th January 15 days after the formation of the government Dehel has written to the parliament secretariat asking the latter to include the voting agenda among other agenda items on January 10th and make the necessary arrangements for the same CPN Mao's center chairman the hell became the prime minister on December 26th after securing support of seven parties there is a constitutional provision that the prime minister has to take a vote of confidence within one month of taking office the first meeting of the new house of representatives is scheduled to be held on the 9th of January he is expected to expand his eight member cabinet only after he wins the parliamentary vote And moving on Sri Lanka's president Ranil Wickremesinghe in his new year's message has said that 2023 will be a critical year for the cash strapped country in which his government plans to turn around the beleaguered economy he however suggested that the worst may be over Sri Lanka's president Ranil Wickremesinghe on Sunday said 2023 will be a critical year for the cash strapped country in which his government plans to turn around the beleaguered economy in his new year's message the president said we must boldly implement the proposed social economic and political reforms to build a prosperous and productive sri lanka in the coming decade as he suggested the worst may be over sri lanka was hit by an unprecedented financial crisis in 2022 due to a severe paucity in foreign exchange reserves that also sparked political turmoil 
leading to the ouster of the all-powerful Rajapaksa family and Vikramasinghe taking over. The government in May last year declared a debt default on over 51 billion US dollars in foreign loan. Reports suggest acute shortages of fuel and food items during April to July period have eased now. The country's statistics department said last Friday that Sri Lanka's key inflation rate eased to 57.2% in December from 61% in November. Central Bank Governor Nandala Alvirasinghe predicted that if the current trend of monetary policy was followed, inflation could drop to 4% to 5% by the end of 2023. And people across India welcomed the new year by witnessing the first sunrise of 2023, while a huge part of the population visited places of worship for a better and prosperous year ahead. People in India believe that the blessings of God should be sought before beginning anything new, more so on the first day of the year. Have a look. People across parts of India on Sunday ushered in the new year 2023 with celebrations and witnessing the sunrise, while a huge populace visited places of worship to seek blessings of the divine for a new beginning. Large number of devotees gathered at the famous Siddhi Vinayak temple in India's financial capital, Mumbai city, to watch the morning prayer and pray to the Hindu elephant god Ganesha for the well-being and happiness of their families and loved ones. Ganesha is one of the most worshipped deities in the Hindu pattern as he is the deity of prosperity. Meanwhile, braving the winter chill, devotees also took holy dip in the river Ganga in northern Haridwar city to mark the occasion. Much enthusiasm was seen on the very first day with tourists arriving in the city from different states. It is believed that a bath in the sacred rivers absolves people of their sins. Similar scenes were witnessed in eastern Puri town where a crowd of devotees from across the country turned up at the Jagannath temple which is dedicated to Lord Vishnu, the Hindu god of preservation. People in India believe that the blessings of gods should be sought before beginning anything new, more so on the very first day of the year. Well, that's the way towards in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Five including child killed in firing IED blast to rock India's Jammu and Kashmir. Taliban warns Pakistan of consequences after minister says will target TTP on Afghan soil. And Sri Lankan president says 2023 will be critical year planned to turn around economy. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.